you've made it through three hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. It's bear guns galore. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey. Hi. <laughs> It was a bear gun kind of wrap up to the show, wasn't yes, it? It was. It was. Kind of fun stuff. It's yeah. uh, you know, forty four Magnum, four fifty four Casul, forty four Special. See, I honestly, I thought a shotgun with slugs would do, would do a hell of a job up close. You'd be surprised they would. They do not penetrate well. Huh? They, uh, you know, I mean, they hit hard, but they don't penetrate well, and that's the whole deal. I mean, and problem is, we can argue it any way we want to. Of you know, we don't know what we're going to need. Generally speaking, people say what you really need is penetration. You got to de- get deep into the vitals i think honestly what you really need is something that will crack the skull because uh it, we'll go back to this you know the class i had at gun site where they described hits in the vital area of a person as a timer you know, in the chest area right, right. yes it, w- it will take them down but it may take a while and hits in the head or switch same deal you can shoot a bear right through the heart and you know when he dies he'll fall down on your dead body Right versus smacking right between the eyes. I mean, literally right between the eyes and breaking the skull, and he goes down. So hmm. I don't know. Would a shotgun do that? I don't know. I don't, mm, you know good question. I, I wonder know. what Franklin has something to say Franklin's about Franklin's got something to talk about here out of Roundup, Montana. Franklin, is there really a town named Roundup, Montana? Yes, there is. It's about uh, 40 miles north of uh, Billings. Son of a gun. I love that name. How, how big is What's population of Roundup? Uh, not very big. I'm not sure. It's a, one of the smaller towns in Montana. It used to be a coal mining town around 100 years ago. Oh, and of course the coal mining dried up, so the people went away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Po- population's 495, but let's call it 500. Four, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, so isn't it amazing? Jim, uh, Jim knows all these things. They're just all in his head, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> Got to well, that, that, that and his Siri phone thing. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> What's up, Franklin? Well, you're talking about the best bear defense. Uh, I'm originally from Minnesota, and I've been coming out to Montana hiking like in Glacier and Yellowstone Park, and they always say when you're hiking, you carry pepper spray. Mm-hmm. And I've hunted black bear in Minnesota, and I haven't had one drop, you know, straight to the ground, you know, with a 30 out 6 yet. And I'm thinking, if a grizzly bear's coming after me, and I shoot, and he's 20 feet away from me, and he makes it another 20 feet, and he takes one swing at me with his paws. And I've seen the grizzly bears out here. Their paws are, or their paws are like small knives. He could do an awful lot of damage, if not kill you, in like mm-hmm. five oh, yeah. seconds' time. Yep, no doubt. So, so what are you carrying? Well, I like to carry. I bought the Smith and Wesson the 329 titanium. Oh my! That thing is. The shells almost weigh as much as the gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Talk to me about, I mean, it's one thing to buy it. I know a lot of people have bought them. Talk to me about how much you've actually shot it. Oh, I shoot it a lot. Uh, I admit that I'll only shoot six rounds of Magnum Stewart at a time, but I buy 44 specials when I'm practicing. I mean, I also have a 460 Smith & Wesson. <sighs> And this titanium kicks harder than that. Sure. It, yeah. it is, honestly, it is the meanest kicking handgun I have ever experienced. Yep. It, I uh, compare it to, like, hold your hand out and have uh, Mickey Mantle take a swing at your hand with a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And I want to do that six times. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But the plus here, of course, is that it's lightweight for backpacking. And you can carry it, you know, and you will carry it. And, it, and yes, you probably won't feel the recoil. I, I think, Franklin, you have figured it out. Would you shoot the lightweight forty four Special in it when you're practicing uh, and run those through it? Shoot a few of the forty four Magnums in it just to make sure it works with those. But, oh, yep. my. When you were a kid, did you ever have a firecracker go off in your hand? Uh, no, I'm from Minnesota, and they were illegal, so I never... Had much access well, that, to them. Well, that never stopped us. I just got to tell you. <laughs> yeah. But I have had more than a couple of them go off in your hand. Mm-hmm. And that, fortunately, you know, just firecrackers, not M80s, where it'll blow your fingers off. Right. Uh, but 
that to me is what it feels like to shoot that revolver. It's like that, and it stings and whacks you, and then it stings for another five to ten minutes. It's kind of like, oh, good gravy. I did that to myself. I actually pulled the trigger on that thing. So you don't take a thousand rounds out to the range to practice with that? I do, and I come back with a thousand rounds. (laughs) (laughs) Not (laughs) $9.99. Nope. (laughs) The thing is, you got to hang on to it really tight when you shoot it. Otherwise, it slaps you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. uh, Yeah. And it's just. But, no, it's a very interesting, um, they make it out of Scandium. It's a very interesting uh, revolver. And you, you really can't believe how lightweight it is. It's just crazy. And so, yeah, that's an option. Hey, Franklin, look, I appreciate the call and appreciate you talking about that. That's the Smith uh, 329, a fascinating entry into the options for bear protection. Let's go talk with John uh, on three. He's out of uh, Lillian, Alabama. Hey, John, you made it on to the after show. What's up? Thank you, sir. Uh, before I get to what I called you about, that's the reason what you just said about that pistol the fellow was talking about. I prefer the 8-inch barrel, ported barrel, Kasool, because ah. it doesn't kick near that hard. No, actually, you're right. Even a 454 Kasool, which is twice as powerful just about as a 44 Magnum, kicks less in a big gun than this uh, 329 Smith & Wesson, just because the gun is so light. It's just a matter of physics. And I was I was told that a, when a Kasool hits you at 100 yards, it delivers the same energy as if somebody shot you point blank with a 44 Magnum. That is true. The muzzle energy of a 44 Magnum is about the same as the energy delivered by a 454 Kasool at 100 yards. So wow. that's well, nice. What opener. I called about is you. You and I both started our pistol buying career with a single six. Yes. And I recently got a hold of a Super 10. Really? Hmm. That thing, have, have you handled one of those? I have not. Tell me about it. Well, it's the darn thing is the size of a, a single-action Colt forty five. Okay. And it has, like, fire sights on the front, and it is just a sweetheart of a pistol. So this is a Super Blackhawk. Now, what, what caliber did you get it? No, 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 no. It's, it's a Ruger single, uh, I'm sorry, Super 10. It's called Super 10, S-U-P-E-R. It's yeah. like a, a, a grown-up single six. It holds 10 rounds. Ten oh, 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 oh. I was thinking about the 10-inch barrel. I'm sorry. I was going a different direction. So this is the 10-round uh, single-action twenty two rimfire. Yes. Oh, okay, yes. That's and fun. I, and I told the lady, I says, I can't wait till Ruger does what they usually do, is come out with a with a cylinder for, for the twenty two Magnum. Be interesting to see if they actually do that in this case. I don't know if they designed the original revolver to take that cylinder because it's going to be a slightly different length cylinder if they've designed it shorter for the regular M fire. But well, they did it for the single six. The obvious question is this: Why did you want a ten-shot twenty-two rim fire revolver? Uh, honest answer: mm-hmm. I took one look at it and picked it up and held it and. Uh, Sort of fell in love. <laughs> Good enough for us. <laughs> you know how that works? Well, I, I asked it that just, question. Just uh, felt, uh, I got. I don't have thick fingers, but I got big hands. I only uh, asked that question as a guy who owns two 10-shot 22 rimfire revolvers. So. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just trying to find my justification here, okay? <laughs> but, uh, but I just like the way it felt in my hand. That go. is as good a reason as any, and there's no excuses made. I don't have to justify it. I just like it. It's a perfectly good reason to buy a gun. That's great. Beautiful. All right. Thank you for the uh, range report, John. That was terrific. Uh, ten shot, twenty-two rim fire. So there you go. Does, does that make it high capacity? That's the question. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about buying mags for it. <laughs> This is true. You could have a pocket full of preloaded cylinders. Though. There you go. <laughs> Swap them out. <laughs> not, not a good bear gun off topic, though. Well, yeah, I don't know how. If, you if, if you're in a place where they have really small bears, mm-hmm. also called groundhogs. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do kind of look like little they bears, do. though, don't they, 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 when they sit do. up, you know? Yes, oh. they do. That'd be kind of fun. Hey, let's tell you what. Quick break here. Let's come back. We'll talk a little bit more about some more guns that uh, we're going to be playing with this week.
taking the striker-fired category by storm, the CZP-10 delivers what most in the genre cannot. From the superb trigger to the purpose-driven features to the engineered ergonomics, the CZP-10 is the complete package right out of the box. With 12 plus 1 capacity in the P-10S, 15 plus 1 in the PC-10, and 19 plus 1 in the P-10F, there's a P-10 for every purpose. For more information, please visit cz-usa.com. Stay comfortable with the new Edge Tech collection of pants and polos from Proper. The budget-friendly Edge Tech collection of pants, shorts, and polos features ultra-comfortable and lightweight yet durable fabric that prevents wrinkles and holds up against everyday demands. Edge Tech from Proper delivers outstanding performance and value for work or everyday wear. Visit Proper.com to learn more about the Edge Tech collection from Proper. All right, just went to the store. I have to go to the gun store. On break? Man, you drive fast. (laughs) (laughs) You said it just went to the store. I'm thinking, wow, that was really quick. You are a strange man. Yeah, no doubt. I know. No, no, no. This week, I'm sorry. Uh, When was it? Friday, yes, two days ago. Uh, went and picked up uh, a few guns. We're we're at that time of year when we're getting guns in like crazy. And so we'll be going out to the range this week, do our guns and gear shoots. And what did I get? Picked up eight Rugers that came in, uh, including some new revolvers. I can say revolver. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I I don't know if they're cleared yet. I don't know. I, you know how I know? I always go to the website. Go okay. If it's on the website, I can talk about it. If it's not on the website, I can't talk about it. <laughs> Tom N D A Gresham. <laughs> you know, hey, you know, I do not want the Security and Exchange Commission coming after me for right. uh, talking about this stuff. They put people in jail. We're not doing that one. Um, but yes, then they will be uh, revolvers of um, similar. <laughs> Various area calibers. that we just <laughs> talked about with the previous caller. Oh, yeah, that's very, very covert, Tom. <laughs> Slick. You, you, will you come visit me when they have visitors' days? No, just tell them you're, you're a rich, prominent politician. You'll never see a day in jail. Okay, so we'll just start listing off some models. You say yay or nay. <laughs> see if he blinks. See if he blinks. Black Hawk. <laughs> Red Hawk. <laughs> Silver hawk. No. Blue hawk. No. <laughs> no. What? What do you say? Idiot. Oh. <laughs> I, nice. I are the idiot. Nice. If there is a class idiot or a village idiot, I am the man. You, huh? I have applied for the position and it went in uncontested. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know, it's funny because when he said the Super 10, the first thing I checked on was a Ruger Super Red Hawk in 10 millimeter. Oh, yeah. Went, Oh. I, gee, I can't imagine why my mind went to the 10 millimeter. Yeah. Hmm, maybe that's what's coming. Now, how do they accomplish that? They got, they got separate <laughs> clips to, because it's not set up to be in a revolver, right? It is not, but you can cut the chambers so that it, they will headspace on the case mouth. Really? Uh, and so they do that. Ah, huh, okay. So, yeah, it works pretty slick. Now, I will have to say, 10 millimeter is cool, but if I'm going to go revolver, I'm going with a 41 Magnum. Mm. Mm-hmm. Just because it's a revolver cartridge, it's actually, you know, we always say they're similar, kind of. But a forty four Magnum is more powerful. There's just no getting around it. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm going semi-auto, I'm going to go 10. But, man, I'm going to go 41 Magnum. Ooh, wait, darn it. Just look. This revolver is also available in 41 Magnum. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. They do have uh, full moon clips with, available for it as well. So cool stuff. Full moon clips are neat because you can do quick reloads with them, too. Mm-hmm. Speed loader. And several of them can fit in your cargo pocket. <laughs> this is true. And you don't have extra bulk. All you exactly. have is th- th- just, you know, they're simple. <laughs> yep. The problem is they will bend mm-hmm. if you're not careful, true. and then they won't work. So mm-hmm. if you have a revolver that uses full moon clips, do yourself a favor and buy several more. Because you're going to lose them. They're going to get loose in the dryer. Gee, I can't imagine that. <laughs> what? what Did that like, happen? Sounds yeah. like guitar picks. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> guitar. What was the picture I saw recently, Jim? Somebody had a little uh, kitten uh, inside of a guitar stick its head out of the, the sound hole. Yeah. And the, the caption was, Hey, did you know there are 37 picks in here? <laughs> <laughs> I saw a cute one this week. It was a picture of the black hole they just discovered. 
yeah. and superimposed in the middle of it was a bunch of guitar picks. That's where they went. <laughs> That's where they are. Ah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay, so fess up time. Have you ever heard something clanking around in the washing machine or the dryer and gone in and found a round of ammo? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> yes. I don't want don't to admit be, nope. I found a mag, do you? Michelle, don't be quiet over Right? There. Yeah, no. We, we know. Us. We know. It, you, you can say it. Right? 22s? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Because they're so little, you can't find them when you're right. checking the pockets, right? Right. And of course, probably not in your pockets, probably in the pockets of the men in your house. That's it. Yeah, blame it on them. Mm-hmm. Right? And folks, even though likely it, it will shoot, don't. If that ever happens to you, don't use oh, that done. as your self-defense ammo after oh, that. Yeah, Please, right. no, it's right. done. We actually, when I was gun site, they have a rule there, which is interesting. Any round that hits the ground, you cannot pick up. It's done. Yeah, sand, done. dirt, mm-hmm. sand, dirt, and also, you think that's your round, and you put it in your gun, and it wasn't the round. It was the round that somebody ah, else dropped there. That's a good point too. I didn't think of that. Yeah, they've had that happen. So they said, simple deal. You rack the slide and, you know, hits the ground, done. Don't worry about it. You have more. Hmm. Makes also, sense. I got a re-education. Uh, you know how I've talked about before when you're unloading your gun, rack the slide three times? Right. I did that when the instructors came over and very politely said, who's racking that slide over there? Oh, that was me. I said, hmm. well, that was me. He says, all right. He says, you do not have to do that. I said, okay. He said, take the mag out, rack the slide back, lock it in the back position, and then look with your eyes, stick your finger in there, and you can tell if it's loaded. He says, the problem is if you had a broken extractor, you could be racking the slide and there's still a round in the chamber. Ooh. Went, oh, in tight. Never thought of so that. So you're going to change your training to other folks now. I have huh? changed my training now. Yeah. Rack it back. You know, make sure there's, you know, stick your finger in the mag well. There's no mag in there. And then look down the barrel from, not from the barrel muzzle in, from the, <laughs> from the chamber breach. end. From the breach. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah, right. Uh, so I went, okay, training moment. I just learned something. Cool. Good. See that? Fun stuff. Yeah. Why do people want bear guns everywhere? Because mm, there are bears almost Cause, everywhere. Because it's cool. You know, we all want to be Jeremiah Johnson or I know, But you got me wanting a 41 Mag now. Damn you, Crusher. Oh, man, 41 Mag is cool. Yeah. We'll see. The, <laughs> all right, quick history. 41 Mag, when it first came out, was proposed as being a better police cartridge. Ooh, really? Back when police were carrying 38s and 357s. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so it had two different loads available. Ah. They had the full house, powerful, like we're going to go handgun hunting load. And then they had a considerably reduced lead bullet load that was designed for police work that had much lower recoil. Uh, it really never took off. Well, so any, any departments just never got... went anywhere. Oh, no, the police parts ignored it in droves. Gotcha. Just forget, you know. No. The ammo today is still very limited and quite expensive. It is. It is both hard to find, and then when you find it, it's hard to buy because it's pricey, mm-hmm. which is one of the things we love about it. Perfect. Right? It's <laughs> difficult. Perfect. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> just what we need. That's why you men are so difficult. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like me buying a 28 gauge. Have you looked at the price of 28 gauge ammo? I have, yes. It is. <laughs> What would you say, roughly two and a half to three times as expensive as 12-gauge ammo? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. It's crazy. Less shot in there, less everything in there. And, yes, we're going to mark it up because you people were dumb enough to buy that in the first place, so we're going (laughs) to sock it to you. It's kind of like diesel versus gasoline, right? Diesel used to be a lot cheaper than gasoline. Well, what happened? I Yeah, I have no idea. Taxes I mean, are higher have, on it. They don't have to refine it as much. Exactly. <laughs> Why is it more expensive? I don't understand this. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Because mm-hmm. they can. Right. And we'll pay it because we have to. Well, you know, it goes back to my whole thing about men and their money. You know, we spend our money, convert money into noise. Yeah. Well, if, if it will make diesel sounds, I'll pay more for it. Just, I love that. <laughs> I just, it's so cool. My thought is you don't have to buy it as often, so you need to pay more. 
<laughs> equals it out. There's got to be logic in there somewhere, <laughs> but I'll be darned if I can find it. Well, you well, know. We know they can't put gasoline in their engine, otherwise it'll blow up. So well, let's gouge them on the fuel they can run. Well, typically, you get better mileage out of a diesel. So if you don't have to buy That's it true. as frequently, it has to cost more. I and, mean, the, and the engines last a long time. Right. We can't have that. <laughs> what what happens if you put gasoline in your diesel engine? It should blow up. The c- compression ratio is much higher in a diesel than a... Right, uh, so you get pre-ignition and detonation. Oh, yeah, yeah. The uh, the flash point is, is uh, totally different. Huh. And I didn't even look that one up, Tommy. Uh, Car huh. geek. Well, I know what happens if you put, you know, a jet fuel is basically diesel as opposed to avgas, which is basically a high-octane... Car gas, that, and so right. piston engines use uh, aviation fuel, mm-hmm. and jets use jet fuel. So if you put jet fuel in your piston engine, it will get you to about 300 feet off the end of the runway before it goes. <coughs> oh, uh, ah. I'm done. <laughs> if, you put, if you put aviation fuel in your jet, you won't even have to worry about taking off. Actually, it'll burn it just fine. It does. Yes, because it's a turbine. It's not a piston. Ah. So you oh. don't have spark plugs, you don't have compression ratios or anything else. It's not great, but it will burn it. Huh. Next deep. time I next time I get a jet, <laughs> I'll uh, keep that in mind. Well, yeah. that's why you need a turbine for your truck. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you talk about making the cool sound where you crank up and goes. Yeah. Or starts winding up. Going, nice. Ooh. You got to have the whistling. Imagine yep, people just turn pulling up next to somebody at a light. You want to go? Yeah, give me a second here. I did hear. I mean, we're, we're, we moved off of gun talk long ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> was it somebody had, or a buddy of mine had a ram truck with a turbo on it, and out of the exhaust, you could hear the whooshing sound of the turbo. Oh. It's kind of sounded very much jet like. I'm thinking, Spools okay, that's up, cool. Yeah. I'd, I'd pay extra money for that sound. That's cool. <laughs> You know, I don't know if it does anything, but it just sounds good. So I'll do that. <laughs> Shoot, yes. <laughs> Which makes yeah. you wonder, why do we even want suppressors in the first place? Good point. Good point. Good good point there. <laughs> oh, yes. Huh? The what? Exactly. <laughs> I, mm, mm. Okay. One of our callers, Michelle, mentioned a gun had suppressor sights on it, and we did not go into that. You want to explain what those are? I don't know if I know what suppressor sights are. Oh. Something I know you don't know, because I had time to Google it. No, no, actually, we had one. <laughs> They're goofy. That's what they are. Because the suppressor is like putting a Coke can on the end of your pistol, right? Right, so it takes you, up so your you, sight you space. When you do the sights, they look right into the back of the suppressor. You can't see the target looking through the sights. Mm-hmm. So they put these gargantuan uh, skyscraper-type sights on your pistol that look over the top of the suppressor. Okay. Hmm. So, so like, they're like really tall. So it's like having to use a handrail for your AR. Yep, got it. Kind of, yeah, kind of, kind of that way. Mm-hmm. Which you know, I'm thinking that's great until I have to grab the top of the slide and rack the slide, and now I'm bleeding all over my gun because mm-hmm. my sights have ripped my hand open. Hmm. Hmm. So I prefer over. to put the sight on the suppressor and then you know look like Marty Feldman trying to shoot the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat <laughs> cross-eyed. Yeah, right. Well, I don't know why we put sights on there anyway. I never look at them. <laughs> they're so overrated. You get the right kind of ammunition. You don't even need them. Huh. Target seeking. Well, actually, you know, street one, ammo. One of the that's true. Mm-hmm. Who was it? Uh, Hornady had the vector ammo years ago. It was mm-hmm. kind of a tracer ish mm-hmm. deal. They they actually had that on the sale table at Gunsight when I was out there. They had three boxes of that. Hmm. And I was talking to Jane Ann, who does their marketing. I said, you know, you really ought to grab those because for your videos. Particularly in your shoot houses where there's lower light, those would be very cool to use for your video. So she snatched them up. Ah, cool. Yeah. Oh, they must not have been in 41 Meg, huh? They were not in 41 Meg. <laughs> <laughs> now, for that, I just put a little uh, Tony's uh, Cajun seasoning mixed in with the gunpowder. <laughs> you get a flash that you won't believe. Oh, God. Gosh. Oh, my. Oh, my, she says. All right. That's a cue. I think that's a cue for break. Cue for break. All right. (laughs) We're going to regather ourselves. We'll come back, and uh, if they'll let me, I don't know, maybe it's be Jim and Cheryl will come back. I don't know. (laughs) 
Whether you are a first-timer or seasoned shooter, Double Star has the guns, edged weapons, and parts you desire. Our products are made in America and held to the highest quality standards. No exceptions. Double Star and Ace Limited manufactures products people bet their lives on without hesitation. That awesome responsibility motivates the Double Star family, and it will proudly protect yours. When you're ready for the best, join our family at star15.com. That's star15.com. Are you tired of leather holsters not holding up to everyday carry or having boxes of holsters for every gun? Try a holster from 1791 Gun Leather. Offering multi-fit IWB and OWB options, every holster is handcrafted from full grain, American heavy native steer hide. Order now and enjoy unmatched quality, versatility, and that pleasant leather aroma. Go to 1791GunLeather.com for an affordable, distinctive holster that'll last a lifetime. You guys know about that story about the, the old-time hunter who said he used to mix salt in with his bullet because he shot stuff so far away he wanted to cure the meat because it took him that long to get there. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> That's cute. Oh, gosh. Mm. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> That's all I got. Tune in next week when we... <laughs> or not. Yeah. So, uh, I'm thinking that... This is the perfect time of the year. It is the weather is great, and it's like I'm thinking hey, I got to go out and shoot more. I, I, well, I'll be shooting this week for the TV, but it, TV shooting is not the same as fun shooting for yourself. You know, you get you're thinking about other stuff. I, you don't shoot well when you shoot for TV because you're thinking about other stuff. Mm-hmm. But I really I got to get out and first of all I got to take out a loan and buy some 28 gauge ammo. <laughs> <laughs> Remortgage the house. So it's the Goldilocks season for shooting, right? Not too cold, not too warm. It, it is, isn't it? Not too dry, the, not too the wet. The weather's great. I mean, because, right. like, you know, a lot of times it's like blazing hot in the middle of the summer, but right now it's pretty good ever. What, what are you guys seeing for temps right now? Oh, yeah, well, it's terrible this week as far as <laughs> yeah, temperatures. We're that's, that's 70, right. you, we're you 40, back. we're, yeah. We just had Armageddon come through there, Exactly. Didn't you? We have pouring down rain today all day long, rest of the week. So for us, it's a little too wet, mm, okay. a little too windy. But give well, it they, 10 minutes. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is true. You get a lull. <laughs> but, you know, spring is such a great time to get out and do some shooting. The days are longer, you got some daylight. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Plus just, all the critters are out. Whether you're hunting or not, just being around the critters is cool. This is true. And it's varmint season. Let's see. I may. I'm going to try to get to it. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I've never shot ground squirrels before. Hmm. And everybody keeps telling me how much fun it is. And there are like gazillions of them. It's like the earth is moving. There's so many of them. Now, it, your term ground squirrels, is it the same as woodchucks or groundhogs? No. No, no, no. What's These the are smaller. Think of something half the size of a prairie dog. Okay. And we're talking little. Oh, like, okay. You know, like chipmunk. Yeah, chipmunk. Chip, chipmunkish. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, okay. exactly. And so, and I'm, of course, my first thought is, well, can I just use uh, 22 rimfire? And they said, well, yeah, but we shoot them out to two and 300 yards. I'm thinking, man, that you got to be good to hit stuff at 300 yards when it's, you know, half the size of a uh, six Coke inches can or long. Something. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you practice thump shooting. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I may want. I'm gonna try to get out and do that if I can. Negative. If I get the the people who invited me, if they're going to be available, you know, it's all that scheduling deal. But uh, it's also the time for prairie dogs. And then in uh, a lot of the country, you have groundhogs. Mm-hmm. Those are That's like big game for varmints. Yeah. They're, they're big. They're also, I will add, tasty. Really? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a vote of confidence on the whole deal here. I don't like it. Have you had them? Yeah, tried it. Tried it a couple of times just in case I was. Uh, just in case. Yeah, just in case I was mistaking the How, first time. Did you, did you cook it or somebody else do it? Uh, my husband. We may have located the problem. Yeah, no. It's, <laughs> and we've had a friend as well that I just, I don't care for it. Ugh. It's just a mammal that's eating grass out yep, there. Like, it's like a short cow. They all have different yeah. flavors. Tastes like chicken. Everything it does tastes not. like chicken. It? <laughs> it does not. <laughs> she says, <laughs> Boy, that was a fast. It does it's not. It's not ground chuck. <laughs> <It's> not. <laughs> ground wood chuck. <laughs> God. What is this thing? I just leaned over and found a gun. Oh, look at that. There it is. What? Thank goodness. Here, we met. It's like a magician. Wait. Nope, there's not one by me. 
<laughs> but wait, no. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. listen to that. Okay, we can rule out revolver. We can rule out shotgun. <laughs> now this is the the new one I just bought. Ooh. Ooh. Yep. Ten millimeter, fifteen plus one, <gasps> XDM. Oh. It's pretty good size pistol. It's uh trying. To Gee, they, they, they can't get a 15 round 10, 10 mil to be the same size as like an LCP or something? Come on, guys. Jeez. <laughs> it's just a really, really long grip. <laughs> a 15 round single stack, that would be a hoot. <laughs> Are you dry trigger. firing? I am. Mm hmm. It's a good trigger. I'm trying the trigger. I like it. It's, uh, you know, I mean, they're never like a 1911, but this is pretty darn good. This is going to be fun. Now i got to get a And it's through. stock? Oh. You haven't had a trigger drive or anything? Oh, no. It's straight out of the box here. Okay. Yeah. No, I haven't done anything to it. All right. Closing it up. All right. I, okay, Look I'm focused I again. I'm, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I was thinking, yeah, I've got that out because I'm going to take that on the shoot this week because I got a note from uh, one of the guys at the office. Says, hey, bring that new 10 millimeter because we have some ammo we need to shoot through it. Because okay. they want to try it. That's what it all comes well, down you know to. It. See? That's exactly Dang what it. it is. We're so far away. Maybe we could change the name of the show to From Gun Talk to Gun Tangent. <laughs> Just kind of go off on whatever. Well, we would do that, but nobody knows how to spell tangent. So, therefore. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ay, ay. Nice. So, that'll be fun. And then I'll find out which of the guns that we're using that I can talk about. Yeah, they did thanks. ship. Yeah, uh, actually, talking about, let's see, left handed Hawkeye, that's their 77. And 375 Ruger. Hmm. Just in case there is a wayward Cape Buffalo. Just happens. On, yeah. on, on Canal Street in right. New Orleans. <laughs> Can never be too prepared. But, you know, hey, in Mardi Gras, who knows? Stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> you can't rule that out, can That's you? right. You know? <laughs> or at least there would be people who said they saw that. Right. And they may have seen it. They may have seen it. That's true. Who's, who's to say? Right? Oh, my God. So, but that's a real cartridge. Oh, yeah. If you just care enough. Now, if you're talking about bear guns, there's your bear gun. Yeah. Right. Because when you hit them in the right place with a 375, they know they've been hit. Mm -hmm. That's that old deal. Don't, don't shoot them until you think that they, you know, have been stopped. Shoot them until they think they've been stopped. Mm. There's, there's that. So, Jim. Yes. Yes, Le Tom. Lever action. Own a couple, Tom. You? Uh, <laughs> <sighs> it's been too wet. He can't get it out is. and shoot. <laughs> they don't work when it's wet? No, no, no. I sink. <laughs> I become four foot five out we, here. We Shorter are. high water but table. We are in the swamp. <laughs> we are. But, but just think, it's not going to knock you backwards because you will be up to your knees <laughs> in the mud. That's true. I see this being like a Tim Conway kind of skit. <laughs> <laughs> who's, that, who's that? Dorf? Dorf yeah. plays golf? Yeah. Tim yeah. Conway? Very good. <laughs> Mr. Memory. I used to love that portion. Oh, <laughs> That's just good humor. I love when they crack each other. Up. I know that. that yeah, the, there's and no humor so like good, that. Yeah, and they were so good at keeping their composure that when they lost it, it made it even better. I don't know how people could actually do any kind of professional broadcast and and lose it and crack up like that. I just oh, you know, yeah. can't you just be professional? Well, professional yeah. being the key word. Yeah, it's just I don't understand that. Vicky Lawrence, oh. rest her soul. She's not dead yet, but when she is, rest her soul. She was classic. What? She was classic. Vicky Lawrence. She was so underrated in that show. I agree. Carol but Burnett was the was the star, and Vicky often got just didn't think, get recognized. Then she went on to do the Mamas. Yeah, show. Mamas she Family. Had, mm -hmm. yep. She had her own uh, spinoff. Yeah, she mm -hmm. even had a recording career for a while. Yes, yeah, she okay. did. Mm -hmm. But lights went out in Georgia. But did she carry? That's the question. Mm. Oh, don't know. Mm. There are there are celebrities who carry who don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. And then there are a few who are just pretty open about it and go, you know, this is what it is and that's where it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, I would sure like to see more women, so actors, actresses, uh, you know, popular women talking about that because mm -hmm. I think they could make it an empowerment deal. Mm -hmm. So just saying, I just think so. So next time you're talking to your celebrity buds there, uh, Jim. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. got to run. There's three on the line right now. Charlize, yeah. you're going to ha have to call you back. The hag. Jeez. <laughs> what? She's hideous. She's hideous. Oh, God, I'd have to suffer through going you know, out with her again. She's just texting me all the time. Good Give grief. Give a rest. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. So, 
Okay, new guns of stuff that's out there that you haven't played with yet. What would you like to tinker around with? I'm going to swing by your place and see if you got a 41 mag after the show. The 40, uh, hey, we have a 41 mag. Do you? Yeah, six-inch gun. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Smith? Smith & Wesson. Oh, yeah. Damn. Oh, yeah, model 57. <laughs> mm-hmm. 56 or 57? I, no, no. There was a 57 and a 58. 57 had uh, target sights, and the 58 was fixed sights. No, this is a... Uh, hmm. It's 59. It's got no sights. I bet, bet right. you've got a 57. I bet it's got... Uh, I think it is a 57 because it's their Smith Classic Series. Oh, nice. For hunting. Yeah. It's a six-inch barrel, so don't I have, scowl at me. I am sneering. <laughs> I, I have that gun, and I've had it since about 68. Mm. Well, we haven't had this one that long. That's good. That would be that would be really bad inventory control. <laughs> right. I'm just saying. Right. Well, I haven't seen that one in here before. Yeah, we've had it since uh, '81. <laughs> you know what you should do is put that on the rental line. Oh yeah. <laughs> By the round, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh. Five dollars. How many do I get? One. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a nice pistol. Yeah. I mean, a revolver, actually. That's a great uh, hunting round. And, you know, Jim, you ought to go in just to try it. Try the trigger on a dry fire it if they'll let you. Well, you uh, know, taxes are due tomorrow, but I was thinking I'll just file an extension and get the 41 mag. <laughs> Sure, I'm, I'm I'm good with that. What's so your reason gonna, for gonna, filing an extension? While well, Cleveland's had this really nice revolver, you're going to get this massive refund. See, so you, you know, yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> no, <laughs> right. I, I love people going. Well, you know, I, my refund was a lot less. Well, that's because you didn't send them as much money through the year, and you actually got to keep your own money. That's right. a good thing. <laughs> yep, having a smaller refund is actually a good thing. Can we go over this again? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mathematically, Whoa, yeah. financially challenged. Okay. Why are you letting them have your money for a year without paying you anything for it? I'm just wondering who's going to listen to this show like on Wednesday or Thursday and think they have till Monday to file the taxes. Oh, gosh, <laughs> ooh, ooh, right. ooh, good. That would be fun. Okay. And, they're call- and then they're going to blame us. Exactly. Right. We'll what be called Tom as witnesses said. during the trial. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Then we're going to have to explain the whole time space continuum thing, and that's going to be difficult. <laughs> Yeah, considering we don't understand it. That's right. Okay, well, Jim, your assignment is to go check out the 41 Magnum. Damn, both of you. Damn, both of you. (laughs) That's right. And I'm going to go do uh, video gun stuff. And, oh, yeah, just for those who are listening, just to give you a heads up. Both of you. uh, Both of you. That's right. Well, one of them had to leave. Uh, So, but next Sunday, as you listen to this, is Easter Sunday. Ah, and we are not going to be here because we want all of our families to have everybody together for Easter Sunday. Thank you, so sir. That's just how it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So there you go. So you guys have a great Easter, and I will be back with you in two weeks. All right, Tom. Take care. I think all that's right, his too. way of saying have a miserable Good Friday and Holy Saturday, Michelle. I think that's what he meant by uh, saying have a good he, Easter. He, yeah. He, Notice how he left he the is, other two He out. is Mr. Darkseid. God, <laughs> oh, darn it. Oh. Okay. I'm, I'm looking at him like, What? <laughs> Uh, Bye. He, he's the M. Night Shyamalan of gun talk. He could turn anything into darkness. Did you say night sights? Did you say night? <laughs> and with that, bye. See ya. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk After Show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. And we'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk After Show. Mm-hmm.